Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another video. It's Wednesday morning the 3rd of April and in this video we're going to discuss the fallout from yesterday's press conference from Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the TBI regarding the search for missing 15 year old Sebastian Rogers from Hendersonville in Tennessee. I'm going to go through the exclusive interview that Nick Berries from News Channel 5 Nashville had with Chief Deputy Eric Craddock. Nick posted a little bit of that interview on his Facebook page yesterday. I played that at my live stream yesterday just before the press conference aired. He re released that just before the live presser. But there's a little bit more on uh, News Channel 5 Nashville's website. I'd like to see the full unedited interview, but it is what it is. I'm going to go through that in this video and then later on I'm going to be live over on Michelle Walks and um, I want to go through Nick Berris's live stream that he did on Facebook because he expanded somewhat on uh, what he's released here. And also, I want to discuss the Court TV episode from last night with Vinnie Politan, because that's quite interesting. All right, over to Nick Berris's interview with Eric Croddock. I'm going to comment throughout. Let's go. There's been an exhaustive search for Sebastian Rogers, but with few updates from authorities in recent weeks, some have wondered, is enough being done? We're doing everything we can do. Every time a tip comes in, we follow up on it. Eric Craddock is chief deputy with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and heads up the investigation. He sat down for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one to talk about what they do when there are few new leads. I think in the absence of information, what we'll continue to do is go back over everything we've already done once, put a, put a fresh set of eyes on it. Standard procedure. It's what everybody should do. If you're a citizen sleuth, that's exactly what you should be doing. You know, rather than going down a rabbit hole. And look, listen, we all go down rabbit holes. I, I do love a good rabbit hole. But really, seriously, if you're investigating a case, you've got to stick as close as possible to the facts. When there aren't many facts out there, then that's when the speculation and the rumour mill runs absolutely wild and it becomes far beyond a theory. It becomes just a fantasy. <laughs> Theory's fine, fantasy not so much. Searchers recently found a pair of glasses, which they are checking to see if they belong to Sebastian. He says the parents continue to fully cooperate. Any evidence of foul play? We have not cleared anyone but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a little bit contrary to what Chris Proudfoot said on his interview with Nancy Grace. He said that he'd been cleared. He used the very words, I've been cleared. No, no one's been cleared. They won't clear anyone. In the Michael Vaughan case from Fruitland, Idaho, they knew full well that Michael had been abducted. They know there's four suspects in that case. They've known from reasonably early on Michael was abducted, but they've never come out and said the parents have been cleared. They've used the same kind of words that Eric Craddock has used, you know, things like you know, interested in the family, you know, the family are cooperating. They knew full well Michael had not been disappeared or murdered by any of his family. They knew full well from early on. Obviously, the investigation has to happen. They searched Michael's house multiple times, just like they searched Sebastian's house multiple times. But they won't come out and say that they've been cleared, you know, even if essentially they have. So Chris Proudfoot coming out and saying he's been cleared isn't true. I mean, they may have used those words to him, but just because they say those words doesn't mean to say that you're absolutely in the clear because new evidence could come to light. And these guys don't know, said at the presser yesterday. They don't know. No evidence of foul play, but they're also keeping all of their options open. It sounded like all the same words that have been used in TBI press conferences in relation to the disappearance of Summer Wells from Hawkins County in Tennessee. 
that case goes all the way back to June 15th, 2021. We've not had a press conference regarding Summer Wells for, I don't know, the longest time. Same state, same remain tight-lipped. I want to see the security footage of Sebastian coming out of the restaurant with his mother on Sunday night. They've showed Seth. There's absolutely no reason why they can't show surveillance footage. There isn't. Listen, they showed all the surveillance that they had, even a bit of police body cam that featured Riley Strain. It's only, what, 20, 25 miles away from where this is all occurring. Same organisation, obviously a different county, but TBI, same state, same area, and they released all the surveillance footage. Did they, at that point when they released it, know that there was absolutely no way that Riley had come to harm due to foul play? No, they didn't know that. But they released the surveillance footage to jog people's minds. So why not release the surveillance footage of Sebastian? Why not? Let's just see it. More importantly than that, let's see the security camera footage that was taken by a neighbour of Sebastian taking out the trash. It will prove to the people who doubt it that Sebastian made it home that night. Why not release that? No reason why they can't release that. I don't know, though. I'm not part of the investigative team, am I? I'm not making the decisions, am I? Exclusive home security video obtained from the neighborhood the night Sebastian disappeared. You can see two suspicious light sources, which we've circled here in an area behind the teen's home. Since we first aired the video last month, authorities have said... No evidentiary value? It is of no evidentiary value. Can you tell me what those lights are? No. Why? Because the investigation remains ongoing. And so it could play a role down the road, depending on developments? We don't know what we don't know. So, yes, it could play a role. Okay, so what was released there by News Channel 5 Nashville on their screen is a little bit different than the fuller security footage that Nick Barris released. And that's not the full security footage, even though it's more than what was shown here. And I think you do see what, in retrospect, we now know to be a garbage truck. Why Eric Craddock can't just come out and say, we believe it was a garbage truck, it was the trash collection, I've no idea. Seth Rogers has told us that it was a garbage truck. So let's play that security footage again that Nick Barris released. All right, now what I want you to do is watch here, watch here, let's move this down, so you can clearly see here, these are bushes, these are floodlights, I think there's a bush there or something, and then you see you've got subject one and you've got subject two, who comes and goes, now what people have speculated is these are trash truck men, collectors, like picking up bits of trash from the neighbourhood, which could be true. But I want you to watch here, because this is what Nick Barris didn't show on this latest um, interview. What is this? Now, when this was released, I thought that was lights from a house, but somewhat obscured by something. But other people said they look like headlights. What if that's the trash truck? And if we see the full, like Seth said, he's seen like 10 minutes of this. If that's the trash truck, we're going to see it moving, probably waiting there for these guys to do whatever they're doing. Subject one's disappeared because they've gone off screen, so they might have just circled back around to the truck, and then they're going as well. But if we see that moving like driving away, we know that can't be a house obscured by something. Even if Eric Craddock says that he's not going to say what this is because it's in evidence, well, yeah, it's in evidence, but if they know that's a garbage truck, why not just say that? Are there garbage people suspects? I don't know. All right, let's finish off this piece here. How difficult has it been, all the noise on social media? Oh, the... The rumor mill on social media has done nothing 
uh, to advance this case. Craddock says investigators continue to work the case daily and deal not with feelings, but facts and evidence. There's no stern, stone left unturned. Nick Barris, News Channel 5. That's all very well. And yes, there is a very negative element to social media. But they could use social media to their advantage if they were just a little bit more open and shared what they can share rather than saying, oh, we're not going to tell you what the security footage was. We're not going to tell you this. We're not going to tell you that. It leads to people filling the void, understandably filling that void. And yes, there is the element that's very negative on social media that is distracting. But remaining tight-lipped on things that you could release doesn't help that in any way. It doesn't slow down the rumour mill. It speeds it up. We've seen this time and time again. In places where the cops are way more forthcoming with who they've ruled out and releasing of any footage that they can release, it at least gives people who are thinking rationally about a case the knowledge that they can move forward with a theory, knowing to exclude other things. While you can't exclude anything, it does take you down the rabbit hole. It absolutely does. And that's not fair to the people who social media might be implicating. And yes, of course, there's always going to be the people who will not listen, who will forge forward with their theory regardless of what the cops say, but others won't. Engaging with social media in this day and age, ultimately, in my opinion, is positive. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I will have much more to talk about later in my live stream. I'll put the scheduler up. It'll be over on my other channel, Michelle Walks. So make sure you, you're subscribed over there and you've got your notifications on. Michelle Walks is my second channel. And if you're enjoying this channel, then you will also enjoy Michelle Walks. So get subscribed over there, get your notifications on, and I will be live later. I'll put the scheduler up. I don't know what time I'm going to do it yet, but it might be like late afternoon, early evening, my time. That will be five hours ahead of Eastern, eight hours ahead of Pacific. I'll see you soon. But until then, I bid you farewell. Bye, guys. How are you? Come here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's hard to run with a little one on my chest. Sorry. <laughs> You're all right. Good girl.